Hey guys, and welcome to the third complete retouch, section four. In this section, we're going to be taking care of eyes and a couple other details, facial features like the nose and the mouth. All right, let's go ahead and create a new group and a new layer inside of there. And you know what? I just saw this right here, so we're gonna go ahead and take care of this real quick using the spot healing brush tool. All right, there we go, just paint right over that. Okay, now here inside of the eye, we're gonna get rid of all these little, like uh, all these little details and eye vessels, blood vessels. So we're gonna use our spot healing brush tool. Let's make sure mode set to normal, content aware, and sample all layers. All right, and then I'm basically just gonna paint right over top of these until they go away. All right, looking good. And if it does anything you don't like, if it kind of looks weird after you're done painting, whatever, just hit the undo button, try it again. Like that, it doesn't really look a lot right. You can hit undo or you can just erase it. Either way, it will totally work. All right, and if that still doesn't work, try grabbing the clone stamp tool instead. All right, we're gonna use the brush tool now to kind of sample this area and paint it. I'm just trying to smoothen out the eyeball just a bit. All right. Cool, looking good. Okay, now it's time to go in here and enhance the eyes. So we're gonna grab an adjustment layer. First, we're gonna brighten the center of the eyes. I'm just gonna click right here. And we'll drag all the way up, just like that. Now we're gonna hit Control or Command I to invert this. And then with my brush, I'm gonna create little areas that look like the actual iris details in our subject. So I'm just painting white on my layer mask right now. That's what give, what's giving me these effects here. All right, so that curves adjustment layer, it's just making those areas brighter. Looking good. Now let's go ahead and add a blur to those areas, giving it a little bit more randomness. We don't want this to look like it was done in Photoshop. We want it to look like those were there originally. And now, yeah, they do. That doesn't look like Photoshop to me. All right, now if we wanna add one more detail in here, which I, I think will be fun, let's just go to our color balance adjustment layer. We'll go to highlights and then pop some reds and some yellows and like really see if we can um, <laughs> get a lot of color. I'm gonna hit Control or Command I, which is gonna invert our layer mask, and then just in like a couple little areas, it's gonna really like see about pumping that color up. All right, we'll go ahead and give that the same amount of blur as before. All right, that looks good. Let's just lower our opacity here just a little bit. And I'm gonna make this invisible just a little bit there. All right, cool, already looking really nice. Now let's go ahead and do some dodging and burning. We're gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna change my brush mode from normal down to overlay. Now overlay works as well as soft light whenever you're dodging and burning. Overlay is just gonna be a little bit more of an effect. Okay, now with this, I'm basically just gonna paint black around the areas that I wanna be a little bit darker. And in this case, you generally want right around the eyes be a little bit dark there we go so we're just going to enhance enhance that area just making it a little bit darker all right it's going to show up as like more contrast in the actual eye all right and we'll make the insides a little bit brighter So I've got my left hand on 
the X key on my keyboard. And basically, that's just allowing me to switch between my foreground and background color really quickly. And in this case, my background color is white and my foreground is black. So if I hit X, it switches back and forth between those two. All right, which allows me to very easily go from dodging to burning. All right, let's go ahead and paint some white here. Come up in this direction here. All right, now we'll paint with black right here where the eyelash is. Beautiful, that's looking good. All right, let's do the other one. Paint white over here. Kind of come all the way up this little crease hood thing. And paint black here in this area. Just kind of darken that down a little bit. Let's go ahead and bring this on under this lid. We'll lighten this up a little bit. All right, and then we'll darken these. Now her eyelashes look great. I think we could add a little, a few more eyelashes. I think it's gonna help separate her eyes out even better. Okay, let's go ahead and create some eyelashes. So I'm gonna create a new layer, and this is, again, with my brush tool. We're just gonna paint black. I'm gonna choose a hard brush. We're gonna right click and choose a hardness right around 60%, and then our brush size, we just want it to be nice and small. And my job here is basically just paint black Go in the direction. Let's bring our hardness up even more. Go in the direction of our hair. So I'm just kind of following along here. All right, those don't look that real. So we undo and just do it again to create ones that look more real. You just want to make sure they have tapered ends. Now I'm using my pressure sensitive tablet here. I have a Wacom Intuos Pro small tablet and this really helps. The pressure sensitivity takes care of a lot of the tapered ends for me. Now if you don't have that, if you're just using a mouse, you can try erasing the ends and that's going to help them look more tapered. All right. Cool, now I'm gonna grab the eraser tool and just erase these away slightly so they're not so in your face. Especially those, because they didn't look real. <laughs> All right, with eyelashes and things like that, like um, this is a good time to, to take your time and make them you know, make them look real. Because if you do it right, they can really make a huge impact on your image. Um, if you do them wrong, they can look really <laughs> just bad. All right, but they're not hard. Basically, you're just painting like little squiggles. All right. Beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing with her eyebrows. All right, so we'll grab a brush, paint black, and I'm just kind of filling these in just a little bit over here. There we go. 
beautiful. Okay, you can see I'm just <laughs> painting. I'm just doing this, really. <laughs> just painting little lines, and that's what becomes hair. All right, there's the before and the after with that. Looking really nice. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in here, see about any details. I'm going to take care of this little stuff here, these little hairs that are going on in the nose. Um, for this, I'm just going to sample this dark color with my brush tool, and we're just going to paint right over top of these little hairs here. Okay, next we're going to sample this dark color here, and we're going to paint right over top of those hairs. Great. Now her mouth, let's go ahead, I'm going to create a new layer. And we're gonna get go ahead and just sample the color here on her teeth. And we're gonna close the gap between her teeth just with the paintbrush tool. Nice. Good job. All right. Let's sample some colors here and work on cleaning her lips up just a little bit. Get them a little bit smoother. Now there's not a ton of like texture here, so I'm not, I'm not so concerned about adding texture back over top. All right. Beautiful. All right, now she has this little thing right under her lip, but we're actually gonna wind up leaving that because it, I think it's a nice defining feature. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and lighten that up just a little bit. And see about removing some of this over here too. I'm just using the heal, uh, spot healing brush tool for that. All right, and now we're gonna grab the brush tool and I'm gonna paint this lighter color here. I had about 10% flow. All right, and then we'll clone stamp over top of that for texture. Looking good, almost done guys, with this area here. Hmm, that really does not look good what I just did, didn't it? That happens sometimes, you can't be perfect every time. I've tried. Let's just erase the way, the place where we don't like with the eraser tool. Yeah, there we go, that's looking a lot better. All right, beautiful. Okay, so our eyes look great right now. Eyes, nose, and mouth. Let's just zoom in here again. Take a look at the before and after with this section. Here's the before and the after. Yeah, I think we're in a great place. I think we're in a great place. The eyes are really, really stunning. And there we go. Cool, so now that those are in place, guys, we're pretty much ready to start the finishing steps. Now, there are a few more things that like I could retouch if I wanted to, like, you know, if we wanted to take away um, like this little line here, I can go in here and do that and 
take away this line. I'm using this spot healing brush tool right now, by the way. All right, eh, you know what? I actually do like that. There's really never like a stop with retouching. It's, you know, you can go in here and make things perfect. The goal is to make things not look like too perfect to where they don't look that real. All right, beautiful. Okay, let's go back through from the be very beginning. Whoa, awesome before and after, right? From the very beginning, we're first, our first retouch group, we're doing liquefy as well as some blemish removal, getting rid of those little areas, okay? Then we're going in and doing the frequency separation, which helps our skin smooth up quite a bit. Then we went in and cleaned up her hair quite a bit. You can see what a frizz mess it was before. And now we're going in and doing all the facial features. So once you're done all those steps, it's pretty much time to finish your image off. And that is what we bring in dodging and burning. And that's when we bring in our sharpening as well. So in our last section, we're going to be dodging and burning, and then we'll be done with our image. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next section.